Welcome to another Teacher Spotlight session. Our focus today is on Subhash Chandike, the curriculum leader of mathematics and statistics at Olmiston Senior College in Auckland, New Zealand. Let's join in the conversation. What in your experience makes a good teacher? I think a good teacher is different for every student. It really comes down to what the student's needs are. For some students, a good teacher is a learning advisor. And sometimes it's about offering pastoral support. Sometimes it means that they're a coach and standing on the side of the students' sports teams. A good teacher is passionate, not only about their subject, but also about the school and wanting to make a difference for our young people. A good teacher is a good student and is a lifelong learner. And the most important thing, a good teacher never gives up on their student. But at the same time, they let them fail enough so they learn how to succeed. What is the most relevant professional learning you've undertaken in the recent past? And how did you apply your learning? Over the last few years, I've attended a lot of workshops and conferences around New Zealand on maths education. I was fortunate enough to present and run workshops on various topics. The highlight for me in terms of professional learning this year was attending the ISTE conference in Chicago. Uh, ISTE changed me. It was the first time I went to a conference where the focus was just not on maths, but a whole lot of subjects. And it wasn't focused on secondary. It was focused on primary, intermediate, K to 12, as they say. The keynote at that conference really stood out. Uh, the ideas that uh, David Eagleman shared, that was pretty much what I was thinking at that time. It was during this time that I met the remaining Sphero heroes and was actually blown away by the work that they did with their respective subjects uh, with these robots. But that was just one aspect of it. Throughout the conference, I had the opportunity to talk to teachers from US, uh, Europe, South America. I mean, there were so many different teachers from different countries with different backgrounds and stories. But we all shared one common question. You know, how do we engage our students? And how do we prepare them for a future that even we don't know what it looks like? I started talking to teachers about how you could use one idea to explain multiple concepts. And for me, you know, taking this one idea not just using maths behind it, but perhaps using a bit of science, a bit of economics. That got me quite excited. When I returned home, I started exploring the possibilities of mathematics in other subjects. ISTE changed my perspective as a teacher. It was almost like I was a first year teacher, just coming into this brand new world of teaching. And I guess if a conference can do that to you, then it's done its job. How do you ensure you're meeting the learning needs of your students? In a classroom, there are an average of 30 students, which means you've got 30 different personalities, 30 different learning styles, and 30 different levels of knowledge. With a sprinkle of a few random variables, such as family expectations, and outside commitments. To overcome this challenge, at our school, we personalize each individual student's learning. It also means that we assess the students when they're ready. So I started to shift my students' focus on the learning rather than the assessments. But being in a senior college, the assessments are bread and butter for university entrance. So, I came up with innovative ways to assess our students' work. 
I had a student that had terrible attendance rates. Uh, when she was in class, uh, she was never focused on her work. She was, you know, just being a teenager. And so one day I made it my point that, you know, I'm going to sit down with this kid and I'm going to try and get something out of her. So I sat with her and I talked with her. I talked to her for a good 40 minutes and found out that photography was one of her interests. And that's the only interest that she really, really cared about. So what I did was um, I changed the entire unit plan for her. Uh, really, I was just tricking her into doing some maths. But in her perspective, uh, she was actually looking for a camera for herself and of all the potential parts that she could actually buy with her camera. That engaged her, she submitted a report for me and that gained her some credits. So to answer your question, I think building relationships and conversations with a sprinkle of 21st century skills are some of the tools that I use uh, to meet the learning needs of my students. How do you work with parents or community or allied professional members to improve the quality of learning outcomes for each child? Last year, I had an extremely disengaged student. And after consultation with his learning advisor and parents, we came up with a special project for him to actually do. In this project, he was going to build a race course and run a, a stall where he was gonna get people to race robots around the race course. The day arrived where he set up his race course and the people came and raced. It was awesome to see because this kid who's always been told that he's disengaged is running around owning the stall. His mom and one of his mentors came to visit him and they were just blown away by what he was doing. It was at that point I realized that every student matters and it was my responsibility to find out what actually engages them. When you talk about learning and outcomes for my students, my thinking is that I don't just think for the students in my class. I don't even think just for the students in our school. I actually think about all the students in New Zealand that are doing maths. It was one of the main reasons I actually started my YouTube channel, Infinity Plus One. It was for students studying maths in New Zealand. I, um, I encourage my uh, team members to actually go and present some of the ideas that they've explored which kind of culminated in the birth of Ormiston Maths Day. Ormiston Maths Day was a free professional learning event for maths teachers. The feedback was great from Ormiston Maths Day and uh, folks have actually requested for a 2019 version and so we are hosting one in 2019. So to improve the learning outcomes for all students, one of my goals is to improve the capacity of maths teachers and of course shed their fear of trying something different in their maths classes. What advice would you give to a teacher that is just entering the workforce? My three pieces of advice for a new teacher is this. Number one, we've got unlimited technology that we could actually use within our classroom can't be expected to know everything. There are people out there that know it. So expand your networks. Connect with people online. Connect with people outside of your organization. Keep in touch with those new teachers that you just left university with. Share your ideas. Number two, you might be called a teacher, but always believe that you're a student. Learning never stops, evolving never stops. What you do today might actually be irrelevant tomorrow. So you gotta constantly keep learning. And number three, and this is the hard one, trying to find the right question to ask your student so it doesn't limit their capacity in learning. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you for your time.